Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, everyone. Um, my name is Jiwei Xiao. I'm the chair of the Modern Languages and Literatures Department. I want to welcome you to this uh, very important event. This is actually the very first internship panel that DML has ever uh, hosted. Mm -hmm. And my job here is not to tell you how important internship is to you. You know better than I do. And the panelists here are going to share you their stories. So my job here is to introduce uh, the person behind all of this. So I'm not the person who organized this event. My colleague, Lauren, Professor Lauren Gaskill, is the single woman who run the show. So let us give her a <laughs> So I uh, just want to tell you that at the end of the panel, we have food there, a real food. So everybody <laughs> is welcome to join us and hang out with us. And maybe not just here, but also in our offices. Uh, we'd like to see you. We'd like to talk with you and chat with you. And, offer whatever service and help uh, for you. So please do visit us in Canisius. So we're all there. Uh, I don't want to continue because I, I know that um, this mic might be grabbed by some intern. Oh, I'm, I don't want to make that kind of joke. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, all right. So. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you to Ji Wei, Dr. Jiao. Um, and thank you, everyone, for being here. Um, this is, like Dr. Zhao said, this is the first time we've done this event. Um, and this event would not be possible without our wonderful students who've decided to be on the panel. So let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> and students, so this event is really for you um, to get ideas and get inspired by your fellow Fairfield students. And who knows, maybe you will be on a future internship panel right here. Um, so in addition to being supported by the Department of Modern Languages and the College of Arts and Sciences um, and the Humanities Institute, um, we're so happy to have support tonight from the Dolan School of Business and also the Egan School of Nursing and Health Studies. Um, in the Modern Languages Department, um, we know it is so important to learn languages, obviously. But um, we are so happy to see that other schools and departments are also recognizing the importance of language um, in whatever professional pursuit our students choose to have. Um, I'd like to also just acknowledge uh, the other sponsors of tonight. Um, thank you to Italian Studies, Latin American Caribbean Studies, Asian Studies, uh, the Faculty Committee on Public Lectures and Events, and I already said, but the Humanities Institute. So without further ado, I will introduce the panelists. Um, first one down on the end, we have Zaida Paricio. He's a senior joining us from the School of Nursing. He's also a Spanish minor. He took the interdisciplinary course on medical Spanish and will share with you tonight about his experience working in the field. Next, Caroline Goulding is a junior based in the Dolan School of Business as a finance major. She studied Chinese here and is completing the Asian Studies minor. And for any of you interested in business-related internships, she will tell us tonight about hers. Um, next, let's see, we have, out of order, okay. Julia McNicholas is a senior with double majors in international studies in German, and she's also an anthropology major. She will share about her Washington, D.C. internship at the intersection of language learning and foreign policy. Uh, let's see, next, Caroline Maher is a senior journalism major and Italian studies minor with a very cool sounding internship that is going to make us all want to go to Italy. Uh, next, let's see, Kala Tiberi graduated in 2016 with psychology uh, and Spanish double majors, and she's currently pursuing a master's here. So she did her undergrad, and she's now a grad student here in teaching and foundations. And she'll discuss her experience teaching Spanish right in our backyard. And then next, we'll hear from two students 
who work with the Connecticut Institute for Refugees and Immigrants. Uh, Ariana Tartaglia, a junior double major in Spanish and communications, will share a bit about the organization and how you can get involved. And she will also speak about her experience here. And then finally, Maureen Perry is a senior with double majors in politics and French. She will share about her experience translating French with Connecticut, translating in French with the Connecticut Institute for Refugees and Immigrants. And then um, for anyone who's a French student, tomorrow there will be um, a session, an information session about the Teaching English in France program. And that's tomorrow at 4 p.m. in BCC 200. Okay. Let's give it up for them again. I thought it was ladies first. <laughs> um, good afternoon, um, fellow students and teachers, professors. Uh, my name is Ed Aparicio. I'm a uh, senior here at Fairfield University. I am currently a <coughs> nursing student at the Yen School of Nursing, and I have a minor in Spanish, which I declared my sophomore year. Um, over the summer, I got this great opportunity to internship at the West Haven VA, which is, if anyone's familiar, Veterans Affairs Hospital, where we serve our veteran communities. Um, I'm I was selected to this program, this internship called Valor, which I applied through Fairfield University and got accepted, interviewed by a lot of people from the VA, a lot of um, representatives in the nursing department at the VA. It was a great experience because um, I was working in the emergency department and it just changed my perspective at looking at healthcare from a different perspective. I never, never thought that the veteran population was a population that I wanted to work with, but then I realized that I really wanted to work with them. Um, and my language just helped enhance, enhance my um, educational opportunity that I, I got at the VA. Um, working in the emergency department, I was able to perform uh, nursing assessment, nursing skill sets, um, clinical assessments, and it just made me an overall better nursing student. And my language came when I was working a lot with the Vietnam veterans and the Iraqi freedom and Afghanistan veterans. Um, a lot of those veterans come from Hispanic or Latino descent. So it was a way for me to communicate with them, a way for me to give provide more comfort for them because I was able not only to just communicate with them, but advocate for them to the other medical teams. Um, it, was, it made my communication with them easier. It facilitated my nursing assessments, and it just allowed me to give them better education, provide better care, and overall, it helped me just learn where I stand with my language and where I can improve my language. I've noticed that one of the biggest improvement was I wanted to become a better writer in Spanish. Um, a lot of the, the, the medical educational um, paperwork that we give out sometimes tend to be in, in Spanish, and we have to provide them in Spanish for our, our bilingual community um, members. And I saw that a lot of the well, words were a lot of medical jargon, so it was a way for me to learn how to facilitate how to say, okay, you have, um, you have, you're hypotensive. That means your blood pressure is low. But someone that doesn't know that, someone that doesn't study the medical field, would not understand that. So it was a way for me to communicate better with my patients and advocate for them. Thank you. Hi everyone. My name is Caroline, and I'm a junior here at Fairfield. Um, I'm a finance major and Asian studies minor. So I actually came into Fairfield undeclared um, in the College of Arts and Sciences. I wasn't sure really where I wanted to go with my um, major or minor. But I ended up talking to Professor Xiao about how I wanted to continue taking Chinese because I started in middle school and then continued through high school. And I wanted to continue it at Fairfield. Um, so she definitely talked to me about the Asian studies minor and how helpful it would be. So I declared that. And then I ended up moving into the Dolan School of Business, where I decided to declare finance. And that was really when I realized how interconnected those two disciplines were. 
So this past summer, I interned at Fidelity Investments in asset management compliance. So during the interview process, I interviewed with about five or six different people. And although they all had different questions and different um, things that they asked me, the, um, there was a common ground among, among all of the interviews, which was pointing out my Asian studies minor. Um, so every person um, that I interviewed with pointed it out and asked about it. And it was really sort of a topic of conversation and something that they said really stood out. And so during the interview process, I actually interviewed with all the different people on my team that I am now um, working with them currently. And my boss said that I, I was the only one that he's ever interviewed that had the combination of finance and Chinese or Chinese um, language and culture knowledge. So that was something that he said really made me stand out among the other candidates, especially because usually you see a lot of business majors which with another business discipline as a minor. Um, and although that complements very well, I think that having something that's very different from finance is something that helped me stand out in my internship. Um, and in particular, it was interesting working in a global financial services company because I could see every day how interconnected the different locations were um, throughout the world. Fidelity has locations in London, um, Canada, and they have a trading desk in Hong Kong and other regional sites in China. So it was really interesting to see um, how interconnected those two were. Um, and then throughout my internship, pro like throughout the internship in the summer, there was a lot of new people I met. And every person, when I talked about my major and minor, were like, oh, wow, that's so interesting. And it was really just a topic of conversation um, and something that was um, both interesting to talk about and also interested the person who was asking about it. So it'll be interesting to see how in the future I can actually use the language skills in my career, although I didn't do that this summer just because I was just starting out. Um, it, was def it definitely helped me stand out, and it'll be interesting to see how it helps going forward. Hi, everyone. I'm Julia McNicholas. I'm an international... S Is it? Oh, okay. I knew I would mess it up. <laughs> um, so I'm an international studies and German double major with a minor in anthropology. And about a year ago, I did an internship with the Linguistic Society of America down in DC. And the office itself was only about four people. And um, one of those four was another intern who was a 30-year-old graduate student um, in linguistics. So I um, was this like doe-eyed, I don't know anything about linguistics. I studied cultural anthropology, not li linguistic anthropology. So the first few weeks was me just like trying to figure out the history of the field and um, why it was so, why my, my own personal connection to linguistics, because that would have made, that just made the entire experience much more rewarding and it made me more passionate about what I was doing. So that came kind of early on because the fourth president of the LSA was Franz Boas, who's a um, famous German anthropologist. So that was really exciting. <laughs> um, I was kind of confused why a German anthropologist was in charge of the Linguistic Society of America because um, we don't have, um, there are no international members of the organization. They're all, they all work in um, graduate or doctoral programs or do their research. Um, they're all American. We have international honorees, but not a lot of um, like full-time people that work outside of the US that are a part of it. Um, and so I really liked that. It made me more interested and it was like, oh, there's a little <coughs> piece of myself I can see in the organization. And I took that with me like the entire three months I worked there. And my, my work was split up into two major projects, the first of which was kind of um, typical intern work. I just had to make a list of every person that's in the field of linguistics in the entire US and from every university. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that took um, like two months of me just nine to five figuring out people's. You guys, as faculty, please put like your email and all like your title because it is so hard to track it down. <laughs> um, that was my own personal uh, grief about that. But the second project was um, creating a suite of advocacy materials about why the field of linguistics and language is so important, especially in national security and U.S. foreign policy. And I really enjoyed doing that because I'm IR and German, and I was like, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. This is very important to me. Otherwise, I don't have a career. And thousands of other people won't have a career. 
and that was shared amongst different um, research organizations in DC and kind of on Capitol Hill as a way to increase funding for the social sciences, um, just as, and especially language from um, just to get federal funding for that because at that time in 2017, it was getting um, really drastically slashed and the little money that was left was usually going to the hard sciences. And so as the LSA, we wanted to um, number one, ensure that all of the people that are a part of the organization understood that it's still extremely important to study linguistics and how culture brings us together through language and how that language develops over time and what that means. And also just because um, if we don't understand each other, we can't work together. <laughs> um, and that was like the most glaring thing to me. If I don't understand um, what's happening in China, we can't do business with China. Um, so that was a lot of what I worked on and it's still something I'm super passionate about and care a lot about. Um, and yeah, hopefully I'm gonna try to continue my work with German going forward. Right now I'm planning on going to graduate school in Germany after I graduate. Um, but we'll see, it's a lot of paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Ciao, Professor Isidias. All right, I have note cards because I'm not as skilled as the others, but my name is Caroline. I'm a senior here at Fairfield <laughs> University. I am a digital journalism major and I am an Italian minor, which I declared sophomore year after someone roped me into doing it. No, I'm just kidding. But um, I just started Italian when I was a freshman and my mom was Italian after taking Ancestry DNA. I was a little disappointed to find out that I am 91% Irish, but um, I am 7% Italian, so that's good. Um, so I interned for Art of Perfection Events, which is a Italian wedding company, and they plan weddings in Italy. They plan everything from family reunions to bridal showers to they do it all, basically. Um, right now, I'm obviously based in Fairfield, Connecticut. But in the summer, I'm actually going to go to Italy with the company, and I'm going to be working on two weddings, one that's in the Amalfi Coast and another which is near Capri, Capri, the island of Capri. Um, and um, yeah, it's pretty awesome. Um, and yeah, uh, speaking obviously helps because I've talked to clients. Most of them are, if they're not from Italy, then they're Italian-American, so it helps especially with little cultural things like how to pronounce their foods or something like that, which they take very seriously. It's um, bruschetta is how it's pronounced, not bruschetta, just so everybody's aware. Uh, there's a little problem with that, but <laughs> it's resolved now. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, so I pretty much work with everything from like details to logistics. So what flowers look good there, what color scheme, blah, blah, blah. Um, <coughs> All the boys are like, okay, this is great. But there's also other logistics, like um, planning things like transportation and stuff like that, organizing tours. Um, sometimes the events are really high end, some of them, so you get to like pick out like fancy f Italian cars that maybe they'll come in on or like things like that, which can be really fun. Um, and yeah, I also studied abroad, so if you guys have any questions about that, I talk way too much about it with my friends. They're like, okay, nobody cares. So I'll answer your questions about that. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks. Hi, um, my name is Kyle Tabiri. I, um, I'm a little bit older. I graduated in class of 2016, and I graduated with a major in psychology and Spanish. Um, I declared like super late. I was like, end of sophomore year, I was like, I should probably declare some majors, and I did too. Um, so when I was coming back from abroad at the end of junior year, I had to take six classes in the fall to get both my majors. And I was like, I wanna do something outside of the classroom. And I saw that there was a teaching in Spanish internship, and I also had an education minor. And so in my mind, I was like, I hate older children, but you know, let's give it a shot. <laughs> um, and so I, signed up to be a teaching intern at Fairfield Prep. So, you know, there's me, little <laughs> senior in college with t 25, uh, 16 high school boys. Um, and so that was really fun. Um, I still think it's really fun. I'm still there. It's my third year. Um, but so I worked with the department head over at Fairfield Prep 
And she taught, like, all the upper-level classes. So when I went in, I thought I was going to be teaching them how to, like, conjugate verbs, like, oh, yo, hablo, like, things like that. No. I was teaching them, like, books in Spanish. I was teaching an AP literature course. And so it was <laughs> very intense for me. I had to do a lot of reading on my own ahead of time. Um, but it was really rewarding. It was really fun to be there with the guys learning as they were learning, figuring out what worked, what didn't. I made tests, I made quizzes, I made games. When my department chair was not there, I would like go in and teach the class because she was like having surgery or on a retreat or something. She was like, can you come in? <laughs> both, both haven't. I had to cover for her both times. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, and so she, I would just come in and I would like be like a little mini teacher. Um, yeah, <laughs> cause then, and then I was lucky enough that at the end I stayed on. So that was fall of senior year. And then my advisor was like, you can just keep working if you want to. And I was like, sure, keep getting the practice. And then they actually ended up like letting go of two people at the end of my, uh, senior year, and so my boss was like, you're applying, and I was like, okay, <laughs> and so I did, and I got the job, and so now I've been working there for the past three years, and now I teach a little bit lower things. I teach more like Spanish 2, Spanish 3, more grammar-based things, but um, I use my Spanish every day. <laughs> um, I also use my experience with abroad. I went abroad, too. The boys actually do want to hear about it. They want to waste time talking about me going abroad instead of actually <laughs> um, what we're supposed to be learning about. But um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> OK, so my name is Ariana. I'm a Spanish major, which I declared very early because my mom told me I should. And she was right. Um, and then my second major is communication. Um, so my internship actually counts for communication, but when I was applying for it, they said we want languages. And I was like, super cool, I could double dip. <laughs> um, so I work for the Connecticut Institute for Refugees and Immigrants. Um, and basically what we do is we handle every refugee that gets granted refugee status in the United States that comes to the United States then gets placed with an agency. So that agency then oversees their transition to the United States. Um, so we are the one for Connecticut. Um, it's the agency itself is over 100 years old. Um, we actually just celebrated our 100th year. I got to go to the gala. It was super cool. Um, the president of Fairfield was there, also super cool. Um, but so there are many agencies all around the country. So this one is for Connecticut. So it places people throughout Connecticut. And a lot of them actually end up in the Bridgeport area, especially when they first come here, because that's where our office is. And it's easiest for us to get them to all their appointments and everything. So the first like week they're here, we have to do like a ton of paperwork. We have to get them to apply for Social Security. We have to get them to um, get all their doctors, like paperwork and verification once they get here. They have to go through all these tests and stuff. Um, we have to get them housing, which we usually try and get them before they get here, but sometimes we can't. Um, it's super complicated, super long process. Um, and then the first three months that they're here, we they hopefully start getting all this paperwork back. So they start getting their Social Security card, their workers card, so they can like start actually having a job. Um, and then we also register the children for school, which is what I, that was my first day of my internship, I had to register children for school. I've never registered a child for school in my life. It was so hard. <laughs> it was really, really hard. Um, and then the, throughout the next five years, they can keep coming back for services. So like legal services to help them renew their papers um, and stuff like that. They keep coming back <coughs> to us. Um, but so a lot of the refugees that I've worked with lately have not actually been Spanish speaking. Um, they've been a lot of Congolese refugees. We get a lot of people from the Democratic Republic of Congo, um, which I did not know. Um, and then we also get a lot of people from um, sort of more northern parts of Africa, like Entria, um, which is like on the edge of Ethiopia. It's like on the coast of Ethiopia. Um, and then we have recently actually had an influx of immigrants from the, I believe it's called the northern... Central American Triangle or something like that. It's something triangle. But um, it's the triangle of like Nicaragua, Guatemala, um, and El Salvador um, because of all the violence that's going on there. Um, so as these people apply, it could take them like years to actually come. Um, and about only about half of 1% of people that apply for refugee status here actually get it and actually come to the United States. So it's a very, very small number. Um, and actually with the new uh, legislation from Trump, we 
used to help over, like, we used to get over, like, 150 people a year coming to the United States, and the past year, it was about 35, I believe. So significantly less people. Um, but we still do work with a lot of refugee families, um, and it's fun. I do something different every time. I mainly work for volunteer services, so I mostly work for the people that get the volunteers who drive them places, um, the mentors. We do all the inf- um, interviews for the mentors, et cetera. Um, I also work with digital and marketing services, which is my actual internship because I interned for communication. Um, But then I also do get to work with um, the reception and placement services, which is like the social work part. Like I do get to work with the the immigrants, um, which is super exciting. Um, And what's mainly helped me from my language is that it's really hard to learn a language. And I do have that experience of like trying to learn a language. I mean, over a really long amount of time, these people kind of just like jump in head first. Um, but I do have that experience of, like, somebody's talking to you and you have no idea what they're saying. And, like, sometimes, even, like, in class, like, a professor's talking to you and you're just, like, oh, you're talking so fast and I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> Looking at you, Sergio. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, it's so frustrating because you want to understand and you hear, like, one word and you're, like, I know what that word means, but I don't know what the rest of the sentence means. Um, so I do, like, come... I do come to my internship with that experience. So even when I'm working with Congolese refugees who um, they speak Kiswahili, and some of them also speak Swahili, and then also French. Um, and they, like, I mean, there are a ton of different languages, and they all sound super different. It's very cool to, like, be in the office. You get to hear a lot of different languages. Um, but so I do come with that experience of, like, trying to learn the language and making sure I, like, talk slow and, like, try and, like, use hand movements. And I know that comes from my comm because I know that, like, when you're speaking to someone, it helps, like, a lot of our communication is nonverbal. Um, but then also, my knowledge of translation services, which this is going to sound weird, but, like, a couple of the refugees I work with don't get direct translators because it's too expensive. So, like, you only get a direct, direct translator if you don't, if you, like, really need it. Um, so, one of the refugees I work with, she's been here for over a year, but um, she's Syrian, and she speaks Arabic, and she can read Arabic, and everything she could write um, which some of the refugees can't, but she can. So when I work with her, it was her children I had to sign up for school. So when I work with her, when you go to a school, you have to provide all this, like, documentation and everything. So certain documents have certain, like, specific names. So I, I would ask her, like, do you have the lease for your house? And she would stare at me like I had lobsters crawling on my ears. Mm-hmm. So she would hand me, like, her phone, and we would use, like, online translation. But the problem with online translation is some words don't, like, translate right. Mm-hmm. Like, they don't. So, like... I would have to, like, think, like, okay, so house lease didn't translate right because she's still staring at me like there are lobsters coming out of my ears. What are all of the words around house lease that are going to, like, help her understand? Um, So I do know that that from using translation services, if you, like, click through, like, all the words, you can, like, find more words. So, like, that's that's how I, like, get through it is, like, I, like, think of all the words around this word, um, which is definitely something I've learned in Spanish because sometimes you're, like, I don't know the word for this. What are all the words around this? that, like, I can say to, like, help me find this word. Um, So that's definitely helped me a lot. Um, And it's also just helped me understand other cultures, I guess. Um, And it was funny one day I came into the office and my boss was like, oh, my God, I forgot you speak Spanish. And I was like, yeah, I do. Like, can I help you? And she was like, no, we already found somebody else, but I forgot you speak Spanish. I could use that. And I was like, okay. I mean, it's on my job application, but okay. Um, So, yeah, that's basically my internship. (laughs) All right, so my name's Maureen. I am also a senior here, and I'm a double major in politics and French. Um, so keeping with the, the internship theme, um, like Ariana, my internship was actually for my other major. It was for politics. Um, so I interned at Make-A-Wish Connecticut, which is a nonprofit that's actually right in Trumbull. Um, and so even within an English-speaking environment, I found that my language skills kind of set me apart from the other interns, the other volunteers. Uh, for example, so I was in program services. So what that means is it was doing all of the logistics for wishes. So when anybody wished to go to Disney or to meet a certain person, we'd be planning their their, their whole trip and making sure that it's all budgeted for and that everything was planned for. Um, So one day a wish came into the office that was a girl's wish to go to Paris. And this was towards the end of my semester. So my supervisors had gotten to know me. They knew that that I spoke French, that French was my other major. And so they took the folder and they handed it to me. And they said, Maureen, you know French. You know France. You studied abroad in France. This is yours. 
Um, so unlike the other interns, I actually got a whole project that was just for me, and it was within France, going planning a whole trip to Paris, which is pretty fun. Um, so I would say that just even being a double major in language has really afforded me those opportunities. Um, and then within using my language skills, um, I actually work as a translator for the Connecticut Institute for Rubber Cheese, which is a opp an opportunity that uh, Dr. Goldfield, my French professor, actually passed along to me. Um, when I was abroad last fall, I was in Aix-en-Provence, France, and I actually took a translation class. And so all of those translation techniques that you were just talking about, those really have came in handy. And I've, I'm in a translation class this year as well. So some of the work that I've done was I um, translated from English to, into French, which is harder, if anybody knows. Um, it was an urban renewal survey for the, the city of Bridgeport. So it was pretty cool. Like. Um, I don't know how the survey went. I mean, I sent in what I had, and I don't know how many responses they actually got from, from the citizens of Bridgeport. But I think it's really cool that, that through this language experience, it's giving those people who may not have a voice in their community a chance to have a voice. And so I thought that was a really great way to be able to use that language and, and put it to some good work. Wow, that was so wonderful to hear from all of you. You are all so well-spoken, so thank you again. Um, I'm just going to throw out one or two general questions. You guys can speak to one part of it if you'd like, um, and then we're going to open it up to Q&A. Um, so my two sort of more general um, would be, how has learning a language or knowing a language other than English um, how has it changed your life? How has it opened doors or impacted your path? The other one is a little more practical. What advice do you have for Fairfield students who may be interested in pursuing an internship that uses a language? Um, and maybe any, any tips or tricks of the trade or any things that were helpful for you that, or that you would have liked to know? Um, so anyone who wants to speak up, you guys don't have to stay in order, but anyone who wants to speak up can speak up and then we'll open it up in a few minutes. I could start on the first one. Um, it, for, I mean, I just kind of touched on the ways in which I think that your language can diversify you, but I also think that within a school as small as Fairfield and a language department that's as small as Fairfield, even within this school and this community, I think that being a language student and the upper levels, whether that's a major or a minor, will really serve you well. Um, for example, last year I applied for one of the Alpha Mu Gamma scholarships, and it's a nationwide scholarship, but I was actually, I actually won one of them, and Fairfield University like, published a whole article on me. And so I went into my internship at um, Make-A-Wish, and they, they had already seen the article. They were congratulating me for, for winning the, the scholarship, and I was just shocked. Um, because I don't think that happens very often for other students at other universities. So within the language department, um, if you get to know your professors and, and you get to know the other faculty, I think that they will, they will give you those opportunities because it is such a small department, um, which is really great. I could try that one. <laughs> All right, so um, I'd say definitely try to intern for if you guys, obviously I'm assuming all of you take languages, I would definitely try to do a language internship because it gives you opportunities that you don't have in the classroom. Um, and any advice, just like, just try. Like, don't be nervous. People mess up all the time. Like, half the time I'm talking and so, not half the time, I'm not like that bad, no offense. Like, hopefully not. But like, you can make a mistake and they're not gonna be like, what are you, like, what do you, they might not know what you're saying, but you'll get through it, and the only way to really work on your language is to make mistakes, um, and even people, like, there's so many different dialects for Italian, too, like, you might not even be making a mistake, they might just say things differently, um, so just don't be nervous, and just really put yourself out there, and try, like, especially if you go abroad, try to speak in the language, don't just go around, make yourself a part of the culture. Don't just order things in English because, oh, everyone speaks English here, and really try to immerse yourself in it and your like experiences, and then you'll get the most out of it. Um, I can talk about the second question. Um, so I think that also there are several internships out there that are very language-based. I would definitely also 
um, think about the fact that there are internships that may not be language based, but where you can definitely use your language or a place where it would help you stand out. And so I think if you're taking any sort of language right now, I would highly recommend to minor or double major in it. I think that um, it sets you apart from so many other applicants because a lot of people just focus on one thing or like one specific area, like just a couple of different <coughs> business disciplines or a couple of different um, arts and sciences disciplines. But I think that when you have something that's so different, um, it really helps you stand out, and it's a huge, huge talking point when it comes to the interviewing process. It's definitely so helpful when an interview is very conversational, and it's something that you love to talk about. Like, I love to talk about the fact that I take Chinese, and um, the fact that I went to China with Fairfield a couple, um, two summers ago, I went on a faculty-led trip, and that was a huge talking point in interviews. So I think that if you can, try and minor in something that's different, and I think that for most people, a language minor is very different. Um, also, I feel it sets you apart when you're going to interview. Um, I know there's a lot of opportunities out there. When I was offered an internship, I talked about being Spanish and being raised in a Spanish community and how, like, there's certain type of diseases like diabetes that are more prone to Spanish people, are more prone to people of low socioeconomic status. So it just helps you connect more with with people that you talk to. And also, it's like it's like, you know, you graduate and you have your ma your major, that's like the toast, right? And having a language, it adds the butter, the jelly. <laughs> so that that's why I look at it. It it gives it it gives it the flavor, you know? So that's what I think. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to follow that now. <laughs> it can't be that funny. Um, I, I guess I want to echo what everybody else is saying. Um, in regards to the importance of it, I do two other German-speaking positions at Fairfield. So every Saturday morning, I go with Dr. Wilkinson to the German School of Connecticut down in Stanford with a couple of other students. And then during the week, I'm in OPS, ATTA. I don't remember which the order. Um, it, what is it? Thank you. It's an AT. <laughs> um, and for both of those positions, it's um, just kind of, I'm just supplemental there, just making sure that students um, understand it. And I'm very much not a kid person, let alone a morning person. And my kids are like five years old in, at the German school. And it's like early, for early morning on Saturday. It requires a lot of um, resilience and patience on my part. So I was able to build that up as well as my language and interpersonal skills. Um, and when and the students that we go with, there's like four of us that carpool and just kind of sit in misery on a half an hour ride down and then like vent about it on the way back up. And we're all in the um, advanced German class. And some of us are better at speaking, and some of us are better at grammar. And this has been um, a great way to just bring the German department closer together, because we'll go out for lunch sometimes with Dr. Wilkinson afterwards, um, and just share stories of, like, my teacher looked at me and told me to go get a stapler from the front desk. And she said it three times, and I still don't know. <laughs> like I, it, Then she said it in English, and I finally understood like what stapler is in German. Um, so it's, it was, oh, it's nerve wracking a lot, but it's been a lot of fun. And I'm really grateful that I got the opportunity to do that. And it's made me more um, patient as a person, <laughs> um, especially when I'm looking at a five-year-old and she's like rapid fire yelling at me in German or singing a song. And I just am like, cool, <laughs> like, I know blue. Um, but I don't think that I would have had been able to do either that or OPS if I hadn't gotten um, close with Dr. Wilkinson and Dr. Goldfield, who runs the OPS program. And I think that um, having that relationship and fostering it for all four years has really made Fairfield a much more enjoyable place to be for me. So, yeah. <laughs> um, well, if we're talking about other positions. Um, but I work with also the Center for Faith and Public Life. We do a after-school mentoring program at Caesar Vitaya, which is a school in Bridgeport. Um, and it's like about like 15 kids um, who don't have behavioral issues, but they have like learning issues. So we go, we do like an hour of homework with them and then we do like an activity usually. Um, and it's like Caesar Vitaya is a super diverse school. We have like kids from all over. Um, and on the first day, there were two little girls who spoke like almost 
explicitly Spanish. Like, they would not speak English. The one especially would not speak English. And our, like, this woman, Karen, who, like, leads the whole thing, she is studying here in her master's um, to be a bilingual teacher. And so she could talk to them, but, like, the point isn't that, like, the the leader talks to them. It's the point is that they're supposed to bond with, like, us because it's, like, all college kids from Fairfield who are, like, the tutors. Um, so when she was, like, matching us, she matched me with these two girls. And my Spanish is proficient enough that I can do this. Um, sixth grade Spanish, I think that's where I'm at. But, um, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. But um, they do teach me words sometimes. Um, but so the one little girl is from Guatemala, and I still work with her to this day. Um, and she told me at the end of last year when we finished the program that she was really afraid starting this program because she was afraid nobody would speak Spanish. And when that she, like, doesn't, her English isn't good enough to, like, speak English, and also she's shy, so then she's scared to, like, speak English and make mistakes. And she said that, like, me speaking to her in Spanish and explaining some of her English stuff in Spanish helped her understand what it's saying in English because she doesn't, like, it was really hard for her to, like, do it. But now we've gotten to the point that, like, I make mistakes in Spanish and she'll fix it. So when I make mis- so when she makes mistakes in English, I fix it. So it kind of goes both ways. Um, and, you know, I like that she's a kid, too. It's, like, very low pressure. Like, I don't feel bad making a mistake in front of her because I do it all the time. And I know she's still going to understand me, and she's going to help me, like, understand. And sometimes I'm like, what do you call that thing? And she's like, oh, this is what you call it. Or, like, we were reading a story one time, and it said, uh, Richa Suelo. And I was like, what is that? And she was like, it's a little river. <laughs> so, like, you know, she, like... Um, definitely, like, any opportunity you have to learn to use your language, like, even if it's with sixth graders, like, they'll teach you what Little River means in Spanish. <laughs> uh, yeah, just to ditto what everyone's saying, well, first of all, if you were interested in working at Fairfield Prep or, like, interning, come talk to me. I can set you up with the person who runs it. She's great. Um, we're always looking for more people to come diversify what we're doing. And just to say what everyone's saying, basically, don't be afraid. I was, like, talking to one of my students about that today because he was like, I don't want to speak Spanish. And I was like, why not? And he's like, I'm afraid people are going to make like, fun of me for making mistakes. I was like, I make mistakes in English. I was like, you guys literally laughed at me yesterday because I said something wrong in English, which is my first native language. I was like, I would never make fun of you for saying something wrong in Spanish. And I do say things wrong in Spanish all the time. And I have native students who are like, Miss Tiberi, you mess that up. And I'm like, okay, you're right. <laughs> but we're going to move past it because you make mistakes in English, I make mistakes in English, Spanish, whatever. We all make mistakes. Um, so definitely just go for it because as long as you're smarter than them, you're winning. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's see. So I think we're going to open it up for Q&A now. Um, who would like to start us off with a question? Bring the mic over to you. I have a question. OK. <laughs> so we're filming this. So if we have any questions, we have to make sure that we talk into the mic. Here it is. Hello. I'm wondering, did anybody intern while studying abroad? Do you have that experience as well? I did. <laughs> Could you tell us about that? <laughs> yes, I can. Um, when I was abroad, I went to Florence and I uh, interned with a mag- uh, newspaper there. And I wrote for a local newspaper there. I went around and did everything from writing to in Italian, translating into English. Um, and talk, I talked to a lot of business owners around in Italy to get ads and stuff like that for the newspaper. Um, which was really cool because I got to know a lot of the town um, and say, like, oh, yeah, like, I talked to the owner of that restaurant yesterday. Like, I know all about the food here. You should definitely try this. Like, it's the best kind of thing. Go read my article about it. Um, But you can't because it's in Italian. But, um, (laughs) but, yeah, it was a really cool experience um, to get out there, especially experiencing the work force in a European country is very different. Um, Sometimes I was a little frustrated, and I'd be like, why is nobody here? Like, it's time to work. (laughs) Um, So I I was like, come on, guys, let's let's get this done. Um, They'd show up like an hour late with a cappuccino. They'd be like, oh, you're early. And I'm like, no, I'm not. I've been sitting here for an hour. But um, 
yeah, but it was really cool. So definitely got a good experience there. <laughs> and just to add on to that, um, in the program that you should have gotten, at the end of the program, there are three students included who were not able to be present, but they still wanted to participate um, as resources for you. So there are actually two students, Catherine Litchfield, who's currently in France, has an internship. Um, so that's another one, as well as Sean Tomlinson, who studies German, and she is not currently in Germany, she's at a conference, uh, but she did have an internship in German, Germany. Uh, and then Blanca Marti also um, has had the internship at Fairfield Prep. Yeah, she's still there. Still has. Oh, and still has. Still has. <laughs> okay, Michelle. Dr. Farrell. Hi, hi, everyone. I was going to ask um, maybe everyone in this room or everyone on this panel, how many of you um, have reached out to a professor to help you find this internship or to, like, negotiate some of these questions? And also, how many of you have checked our super-duper website on our department webpage? Yay! Go ahead. Um, I've... So I, I don't come from a family that has a uh, military background or veterans in my family. So I found out about this internship through my professor, Dr. Lavanio. Um, it's um, the Egan School of Nurses were really um, centered on veteran center care. And she told me, like, I think you would be a good fit for, for the veterans. Um, it's a population that's an older population, but you also have a younger population. But she was like, you like older people. so you would be great at working with the older people. Um, so I talked to her about it. I didn't even know um, our uh, president, our dean, uh, Dean Kayser, is actually a, a fellow vet. She was in the Army. So it was really cool to connect wow. to connect with her about that experience. Um, because I, like in my future plans, I do plan on enlisting in our uh, military to see, like, you know, to see how it, it feels to be in um, active duty to walk in their shoes so I could provide better care for our veterans. And the, did anybody else um, reach out to a professor or use the department website, um, our internship list? No? Anybody, if you haven't checked out our internship list, please check it out on the department website, Department of Modern Languages. set of people right here with great experience. What would you like to ask? Yes. <laughs> Grabbing the mic. Uh, I, I'm so impressed. I feel like, you know, hearing your stories make me feel you're somehow closer to reality, you know, working with refugees and all these stories. I mean, it's very touching uh, that you're um, closer to this larger reality and you have this international perspective uh, because of that. Uh, but my question has more to do with something more practical. So when you are applying for internship uh, jobs, what are, I mean, you might have several choices. So what might be your uh, standard criteria for choosing one particular <laughs> over the others? And uh, also I wonder, are these internship jobs paid or unpaid? And does it ac actually affect your decision? I guess I'll go. Um, that was a really good question. Um, I think one of my base cr criteria is when I am applying to internships. Um, I know I got two internships over the summer. but. I want to see which internship is going to give me the most education opportunity. Um, the other internship I had was more of a CNN job, more of a nursing assistant. But I didn't want to do that kind of work. I wanted to do real nursing work. Um, I feel like that's the biggest criteria when it comes to an internship. What are you going to get out of that internship? What is the most education opportunity that internship could offer you? Um, I know also um, the pay was good at the VA. Um, <laughs> I made 80% uh, of what a nurse at the VA makes, so that was um, a great, great way to like put myself in that real, real world scenario. I remember doing 12-hour shifts, um, doing night shifts, and actually documenting, seeing people's records, medical records. So it was, it was a very, very um, good process. 
Um, I had to go through the government to get this internship. I'm a federal employee, so it was a different process where I had to get fingerprinted. I had to get background checked. I had to do intensive applications online that were about 60 to 40 pages long. I had to send out uh, references to my bosses, and they got letters from the department of the VA saying, oh, is this guy a good worker? Is he, is he a felony and uh, stuff like that? Um, I had to get recommendation letters from my professors. Um, it was definitely a long process, but definitely worth it in the end. I think something that's really important when you're looking for an internship is the company culture. When you're um, applying, I think not even just in the business world, but any other sort of internship, it's really important to look at um, the company or the organization's goals and how they treat their employees and what their um, sort of mission or message is. Um, what I loved about Fidelity was how global and how diverse the workforce was. They were really adamant about having the most diverse group of people that they could have because it sets the company apart by having so many different diverse thoughts and opinions. Um, and it really just improves the company overall. So I think when you're applying, definitely, although I think a lot of people think, oh, the pay, you want like the highest paying job you can get, but you really want to be happy with where you're working. Um, so I think it's really important to look into that culture and see um, if you could see yourself there in the future and if it's like a really good fit. Um, my internship was not paid <laughs> and DC Metro is um, not cheap. <laughs> so that was that was something that like I thought about, but it didn't it didn't deter me from doing it. Um, and I don't know, I'm still trying to figure out what I'm going to weigh when I look for jobs um, in the real world after I graduate, um, trying to like figure out what I want to focus on and when and for how long. And because I like I'm 21, I feel like hopefully I have a lot of time left <laughs> to figure it out. <laughs> um, but for right now, I'm looking at um, masters of public policy and masters in international relations and German graduate schools um, so that I can kind of have the best of both worlds and um, sometimes those programs abroad are a lot cheaper than they are here because um, most, uh, especially in Germany, a lot of universities uh, don't have tuition fees. So you only pay like 128 euros for an entire uh, year of graduate school, which is insane. Um, and uh, that's a big plus. <laughs> and it makes having, um, if you do have an internship unpaid, it makes it a little bit easier when you don't have to think about um, debt. <laughs> I would say also one great thing about Fairfield is that you can do those internships for credit. So I know my internship in probably is yours for credit as well. Mm -hmm. So within like, I know within the College of Arts and Sciences, you can do internships for credit. And so instead of taking five classes, you can take four classes and then intern for about 12 weeks, 12 hours per week. Um, and then that's something that you can add to your resume and it's always a talking point for for um, interviews and something that really stands out about you on your resume. So if you're thinking about interning and it may not be a paid position, definitely ask if that you, if you can do that internship for credit. Um, because like Julia said, it's tough to work and not get paid. Um, it makes showing up and staying for those long eight hour days pretty tough. But if you know that you're spending this time and instead of sitting in a class or in, and doing homework for a class, I think it's much more rewarding and it makes you work a lot harder. And to add what, you, what she said, um, I know that some internships aren't paid, but the biggest um, thing is putting that on your resume. It shows that you have um, clinical experience or you have real world experience in the field which you want to pursue. So when employers see that, they, um, they kind of are taken by, they're like, oh, okay, wow, he knows what he's doing or she knows what she's doing because she's done it and she's performed it. Well, I think we can continue this conversation here and outside um, at our reception. If you guys have any other questions, please stay or please stay and talk to the other faculty. I'd also like to thank the professors of the department for helping me to put this all together. I could not have done this without you all, so thank you. Thank you. And one more applause for our panelists. Thank you.